Hi guys, it's Lauren Daisy. Daisy. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at deleted scenes from Pretty Little Liars and deciding whether they should have kept them in or not. I think this is really fun because these scenes, obviously they filmed them, they just got cut, so they technically are canon. They did happen if that makes sense. I thought to myself, I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find every single deleted scene from Real Liars. I have all the DVDs, so I've seen all the deleted scenes now. And we're gonna go through them every single one, season by season, and decide should they have kept them in. This was really fun because I actually hadn't seen a lot of these before, so maybe you also haven't seen a lot of them before and you're almost getting like new PLL content after like six years of it being off the air. <laughs> so let me know down in the comments if you agree and let's get straight into it. So in season one, we have two deleted scenes for season one, episode two, the Jenna thing. And the first one is the Hastings in the garden. Spencer is sitting, she's having breakfast. It looks so, it looks oh, so gorgeous. And she's looking at a course catalogue for Hollis College and she's circling interior design and is kind of hoping to do a course that's maybe a bit more fun but then when Ren, Melissa and Peter sit down he kind of mentions you know oh like econ or like science or something like that and she's kind of discouraged from choosing one that she would actually enjoy. Spence what are you thinking? Poli sci or econ? I haven't decided. Ren and Spencer have another kind of like flirty look in this scene, kind of, you know, having a bit of banter about how econ doesn't really sound like a fun course and, and things like that. Whereas Melissa is on her dad's side kind of saying, oh yeah, well, Spencer's going to go to an Ivy League like me. With this one, I understand that obviously it was cut for time and it is quite similar to the dinner scene that we see in this episode where Ren, Melissa... Uh, Peter and Spencer go out for dinner and they play like high high and low or whatever that game's called and so because of that I think this is too similar to also include but I did like it and I think it's good because it shows more of that Hastings dynamic and that Spencer struggles with standing up to them and kind of going against the grain of like the Hastings way. The second scene is of Spencer on her front like on her back porch and she's kind of got a running gear on she's ready to go to go for a run with peter but then he comes out the door and ignores her goes straight over to melissa who's obviously very upset and they go into the barn and this i think is supposed to be after ren and spencer's kiss so it's kind of like that reveal that they kind of know what happened it's kind of a pointless scene um so i feel like this one doesn't need to be added back in because all of the Hastings made it very clear in other scenes that they did not support Spencer in this. We have one deleted scene in the third episode of season one to kill a mocking girl and this takes place in the classroom. So they're sat in class and Spencer gets an A text and I was really surprised that there were any deleted scenes that featured A text. I wouldn't think that was something that they would have cut out but she gets a text that says poor Hannah is going to take more than lip gloss to keep those loose lips sealed. So I think this is when Hannah's being interviewed by Wilden alone because it's just the other three liars that are in this classroom scene and the phone graphic on this one is honestly so lazy. It says like one of two messages and it also says that it's 6.47 p.m. even though they're literally sat in class in the middle of the day. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I spent to guess this text from A and Ezra's teaching and kind of notices that she's on her phone. So he calls on her to answer a question but she obviously isn't paying attention and so Arya jumps in to answer it instead. And this is when things get horrifically 
awkward and cringe. They're talking about the perspective in To Kill a Mockingbird and Ari talks about how she thinks that kids see a lot more. They probably see more than adults, but they just don't have the words to express it yet. Ezra kind of asks, why do you think that they see more than adults? And Arya says that they're curious and they act on their feelings. Ezra then says, do you think that adults have lost that ability? And Arya says, not the lucky ones. And they're literally flirting in class. And the next line, I'm literally just gonna play the scene for you because it makes me cringe so badly. <laughs> And what happens to those people who are unable to act on their feelings? They get very frustrated. Spencer, Mona, Emily, everyone is looking at them like, what the hell is going on here? They're literally flirting in broad daylight in the middle of the class. And it's so cringe and so awkward. And also, it kind of almost sounds like Arya's alluding to the fact that she's the child and Ezra's the adult. That like Ezra isn't acting on his feelings, but because maybe she's younger, she's able to act on those feelings and like she is curious and stuff. And it just feels so, so weird. The scene is so awkward. I literally recoiled when I was watching it. So um, this scene is horrific and it definitely um, deserved to be cut. <laughs> this one can stay in the deleted scenes. In episode five of season one, Reality Bites Me, we have two deleted scenes. The first one is in Ezra's apartment when he actually sees the text from A on Arya's phone. And we hear about this because he obviously comes, she goes to see him and he comes to the door and he's like, oh, who's A and, and all this stuff. Um, but I actually think, even though this is a very quick scene, that it would have been interesting to include if they had maybe fleshed it out a little bit more. And we got to actually see his reaction to reading the text. Because obviously knowing what we know now about Ezra, who did he think A was? Did he think A was Alison? Because he was obviously supposedly writing his book about Alison at this time. Yeah, I just think it would have been interesting to see more of his reaction to that. Because obviously when Arya comes, he's like furious and stuff. But I think seeing his solo genuine reaction would have been a good thing to include. The next one is Hannah at her laptop and she is looking at a website for real love weights. And it's literally just a quick scene. I think it's like five seconds maybe. But I kind of wish they had kept this in. I feel like it shows Hannah's more genuine interest in the topic and trying to understand Sean's point of view rather than just being kind of... I don't know if desperate is the right word, but like really wanting him back and just kind of going along with it in order to get him back. Whereas this kind of showed more that she was actually willing to learn more about his perspective on it and maybe take that on board. I thought that was quite sweet. Um, so I think it would have been nice to have put that in. We have one deleted scene in episode eight, please do talk about me when I'm gone. And it's Alison's memorial scene. And we see the girls' speeches and the things that they said about Alison. And I think Hannah's and Arya's were fine to cut. They didn't really add much, but I think it would have been nice to have kept Emily's in. I think the way that she talks about Alison just feels so much more... I don't know, in a weird way, so much more sincere and genuine than the other girls. I feel like when she talks about her, you can really feel that she loved her in a different way and that they had a different bond and it just felt so much more heartfelt than the other girls' speeches. So I feel like that would have been kind of nice to include. She'd never tell you where she was taking you. She always wanted to surprise you. Now for Salt Meets Wound, which is the 12th episode of season one, we basically have a whole plot that was cut out. So we have three scenes that were deleted and they all like link together, right? So firstly, we see Ella on the phone at school and she's talking to somebody on the phone. She's kind of, you know, like giggling. Sounds like maybe she's flirting with this person. And Aria comes over and is she overhears and she's kind of suspicious and asks Ella who it is but Ella insists that it's just a friend and this is a side note but I adore Ara's outfit in this scene I absolutely loved this look it was just it was so good later we have Ella and Aria at the grill and Ella mentions her hot yoga teacher and Aria is kind of like oh god you don't have to tell me that he's hot and Ella says no 
she's just a hot yoga teacher. It's just called hot yoga, um, which I thought was like a cute little scene. Um, and Arya then asks again about this guy and Ella admits that he's, you know, called David and she's going to go and have drinks with him. And they kind of talk about how it's weird for both of them. It's weird for Arya to hear that she is now dating, but it's also weird for Ella to now be dating after being with Byron for so many years and, and having this family. I'm sorry. It's just, it's kind of weird for me. I know. Me too. But, you know, I'm on my own now and I got to try to figure out what that means. I think it would have been nice to keep this. I think exploring divorce more in the show and the actual impact that it had on the girls, because obviously we see it more with Hannah, but I think Ella and Byron's divorce also plays a big role into Mike's character. Um, and I think it would have been nice to see these scenes where... Aria and Ella are having these kind of open conversations about it. Then lastly, Aria is walking home and she sees Ella sitting alone in the grill. So she goes in and asks if David stood her up, but Ella says it was actually her that canceled the date. I'm a married lady. I don't know how to get through an evening without talking about my husband or my kids. She basically says to Aria that she doesn't know if she's ready and that she in her heart of hearts is a wife and a mother and that's what she knows and that's what she you know goes to talk about and she doesn't really know how to explore this new single life and it's really nice because Arya is a lot more sympathetic in this scene than she was in the earlier scene and she encourages Ella to call him back you know when um, she is ready, which I really liked. And Arya asks for a sip of her drink and she says no. And they have this like cute little bantery moment. And I really think they should have kept these three scenes in. Um, I know it's like about the drama and the mystery in this show, but I do really love the heartfelt moments as well. Yeah. And like I said, I think exploring that side of divorce and the nuances of it would have been a really important thing to include. And I always really liked Ella and Ari's relationship. We kind of see less of it as the show goes on and as kind of Ella is sort of phased out of the show. But I think in these early seasons, it is really established and it's really sweet. And I think this these scenes only add to that. And also, if you watch this channel, then you know that Arya is my favorite and I adore her. So I'm always, I'm always happy to have more Arya scenes. In the 13th episode, Know Your Frenemies, we have one deleted scene. And this comes after Pam has basically ratted Maya out to her parents about having pop. And Emily's leaving the house and we're seeing the tension between Pam and Emily because of what she's done. Pam wants to know where she's going and Emily basically says, you don't have to worry because you got what you wanted and Maya's gone. Pam then kind of tries to justify her action saying it's not the first time and she's being sent away to get the help that she needs. I hope you're happy because no one else is. And Emily's basically just not having a bar of it. And I think this would have been a good scene to include because I don't think we really get to see much of the fallout between Pam and Emily over this situation. And I think it's also kind of a bit of a turning point for Pam. It's kind of part of that journey where she sees how much she really hurt Emily by doing this. In Where in her eye she was trying to protect her, I think she saw that it actually really upset her and this kind of kickstarts that character progression for her. In Careful What You Wish For, which is the 14th episode, we have a very, very quick deleted scene, which is just kind of an awkward conversation between Byron and Ella at the dance-a-thon. It's just very clearly awkward and Byron's kind of trying to make conversation and Ella's not really having it. Um, I feel like this is fine to stay gone it's obvious that things are awkward between them, so I feel like we didn't really need to see it. In Je suis un ami, I think it's called, uh, the 16th episode, we have three deleted scenes. So the first one is Emily, and she watches <laughs> Paige run on the treadmill, which is a little bit weird. After that, our second deleted scene is her ringing Paige and basically saying that she's there for her and, you know, she's asking if she's okay and she's available if she wants to talk. So I guess it showed that maybe... Emily did care for Paige and was kind of looking out for her. I don't really care for this scene. I feel like it was fine to, to be gone. 
But then a scene that I actually did really like is the third deleted scene, and that is with Arya and Hannah. They're in Rosewood High, they're stood at their lockers, and Byron and Ella at this point are sneaking around and Arya's caught them. So that's kind of what they're talking about. So awkward at breakfast this morning with my dad. I just kept stuffing food in my mouth so I didn't blurt out, why are you sneaking around with your own wife? Then they see Caleb come out of the bathroom, obviously having just brushed his teeth because they now know that he's living there. And they're kind of talking about that. Arya thinks maybe they should tell somebody, but Hannah says no, because then he'll just go back to his foster family. And they're kind of like, why did he need all that money? And they're kind of talking about that. And I think they should have kept this scene in, firstly because the scene's kind of banter, like between Hannah and Arya. I just love little friendship scenes. But also it showed the beginning of Hannah really kind of understanding his situation and then that kind of forming into their relationship. Like you even see it then with Arya not really knowing how to handle the situation. Then Hannah comes in with this is why. And I think it's quite sweet that this is kind of when we start to see that she is starting to care about him. Episode 19, A Person of Interest, we have one quick scene and this is when Spencer's at the motel with Toby. She rings Veronica and lies and says that she's staying at Aria's with the other liars. Veronica then hangs up and we see that Garrett is interviewing Ian and Melissa and Garrett asks if that was Spencer but Veronica lies and says no. So I guess this kind of showed that she was maybe starting to catch on to the suspicions and she didn't want to tell Garrett that it was Spencer. Um, and then we also kind of see, I guess it adds a little bit more context that the police did end up interviewing Ian and Melissa after this whole thing. They didn't really just kind of like brush past it, but I feel like it doesn't really add much. Now we're moving on to season two and the second episode of season two is called The Goodbye Look. And we have one scene, but I absolutely adore this deleted scene so we have toby and spencer they're kind of cuddling by the fire in the hastings living room and spencer's saying that she loves having toby here but she hates that they kind of have to sneak around and steal moments together he then says that they won't have to do it for long because he's decided to get his ged and he's going to start his own carpenting business um and it's a really it's just really sweet and spencer you know asks him to make her something and he says that he already has which obviously we know ends up being the rocking chair that he gives her later in this season will you make me something i already have but you'll get it when i have my own place because i think that's where you're gonna want to keep it i'm intrigued this scene is so cute and I wish they'd kept it. It's sweet between the two of them, but also it adds another layer to when Toby then finally gives her the chair because it's obviously mentioned in this scene. So then that would have been a nice callback, whereas like the chair is kind of a surprise. In episode six, Never Letting Go, we have two um, deleted scenes and these both take place at the fashion show. So the first one is that Noel comes up to Arya and says he hasn't seen her around much. Um, and he mentions never finding out who put the test answers in his locker. And she kind of asks if he thinks that it was her because it wasn't. And then he, you know, kind of walks away and whatever. I feel like they should have kept this because after Noel and Arya date and everything kind of blows up, we don't really see them ever interact again. And I think him kind of not confronting her, but mentioning, oh, you know, I kind of have a bit of a suspicion about this makes complete sense. The fact that they just never really talk about it again after that never really made any sense to me. Then we have a scene which is really bizarre. Spencer's backstage and she sees Mona and Mona was obviously organizing this whole thing. And this model comes up and she has a roller stuck in her hair and Mona kind of like tells her not to panic and she ends up just cutting the roller out of her hair. She does not try to untangle it, nothing. She just cuts it straight out of her hair and just leaves her with this like short bit of hair at the back and is like, oh, it's gonna be fine. And then the model is like, oh, okay. And she leaves and Spencer's like, oh wow, you handled that really well. And Mona's like, oh my gosh, thanks. And it was, it's just weird. <laughs> What is this ad? I guess it kind of shows that Spencer's trying to put out some kind of olive branch with Mona, you know, kind of try to make an effort with Mona, but 
it's just such a weird scene because why would you just cut that roller out of her hair and then why did Spencer just praise her for it? Like, <laughs> I think he could have handled it a little bit better, actually. <laughs> Episode 10, we have Touched by an Angel. This is a very quick scene. Ezra goes to the grill and he sees there's like this little triangle made out of um, a straw and a Hollis brochure that he had given to Arya earlier in the day. So I think this scene is just to show that he can tell that Arya has been here and that she was probably here with Jason. And then he goes to like save her from Jason um, later on. This scene, yeah, is basically to show that he could tell that Arya was there. And it's so short that I feel like they didn't really need to include it. I mean, like they could have, but yeah, it doesn't really add much. Episode 11. I must confess, this should have been kept in, okay? And I don't, I mean, obviously it's for time, like they're all cut for time, but I can't believe they didn't include this, okay? Because it answers an unanswered question, okay? So, we have Emily and Myra at the grill when Emily rings Myra and basically asks her to meet her and they kind of reunite, right? A dessert is then delivered to their table and when Maya lifts up the little profiterole, there's an engagement ring under there and Emily just stares at it and Maya's like, oh, I think this was, you know, sent to the wrong table and Emily doesn't say anything. So then Maya assumes, oh, maybe she did actually buy this for me and it's all very weird. And then Dr. Sullivan calls and says that she knows who A is and then all that kind of goes on, right? And honestly, I feel like they should have just kept it. Firstly, because it was Maya and I just, I love her and I love any Maya and Emily scene because we deserve so many more of them. And I feel like someone needs to make an edit of this where it looks like an actual proposal because that's what they deserved. So then when they go to Dr. Sullivan's, Emily and Spencer are talking about it. She tells her about it and she says that she didn't know what to say. She didn't say anything. You say, sorry, that's not my ring or yours. The ring is Melissa's. If you remember, Spencer pawned Melissa's ring in order to buy Toby's truck and then A steals the ring. And we never see how the ring came back. We never see if it came back. And I guess you're just supposed to assume that because Ian then died, like, it, you know, Ian had died and everything it just didn't really matter. <laughs> um, and Melissa just forgot about the ring. But no, the ring was returned. It was just in a deleted scene. So then for episode 12 over My Dead Body, we have a continuation of this engagement scene ridiculousness. And the girls are outside Dr. Sullivan's house and Spencer basically asks Emily to get the ring back from Maya. You're gonna unpropose today, right? figuring it out. Oh, what's the rush? They just got engaged. Okay, well, if you register at movies, can I go with you? Because they have these guns where you point things okay. at. We're not registering and we're not getting engaged. Yeah, does Maya know that? I just don't understand why they didn't keep this. It's so good. So then, then we cut to Emily and Maya in Emily's room and this is when they're talking and she says, oh, you know, I like the new Emily. I just don't know if she's going to like me and all this stuff. And what they cut out of this scene is that Maya gives Emily the ring back. And she says, you know, why don't you hold on to this for a while? Um, and I love you for the gesture and everything because she thought that it was just kind of like her, like a kind of symbol of them being together or something. I don't know. But yeah, she gives Emily the ring back. I love you for it. But I think you should probably hold on to it for a while. And these seeds are so cute. They should have kept them. And it's so funny because I was like, when I was trying to figure out where these actually slotted into the actual episode, I went back and watched these scenes and you can see it. Like you can see Emily holding the engagement ring in this scene because they obviously filmed it that way, but they just cut out all the stuff about the engagement ring. So she's just holding this ring and I never ever noticed it. Then we go to Spencer and Toby in her room and he's holding the ring and he's kind of like, you just found it in the kitchen? Like how... How did no one see it? And she says, oh, you know, I don't know, and whatever. And then the scene just goes back to normal after this. We then have one of Garrett at the police station, which is super quick and not really necessary. But then we go back to the engagement ring again. And this is the scene where Spencer gets into Toby's truck and breaks up with him because that's her task from A, right? And they cut a whole bit from the beginning of this talk. She says that she lied to him this morning about where she found the ring. And then she says that she actually pawned it to buy the truck. The ring wasn't in the kitchen the entire time. I pawned it. And I used the money to buy this truck. And again, I feel like... 
they just should have kept it because it solves this whole mystery of what happened to Melissa's ring? Did they ever get it back? They did. And when she says, oh, I lied to you this morning, they then make it about her telling him about Peter when actually it was about the ring. And I feel like they should have just kept it that way. In episode 15, a hot piece of A, we have Hannah and Emily talking in her room and she's confiding in Emily about how she's worried that everything that's going on with A is going to push Caleb away and maybe damage their relationship. And Emily reassures her about this. Emily, wherever I go, disaster follows. I'm a human hurricane. Okay, the day he gets back to California, I get arrested. Why would he want to stay around? He's back in Rosewood because he wants to be with you. What are you thinking now? I'm thinking it's 7 a.m. and I'm already sweating in bad places. It's a cute scene. I just really like scenes where they feel like actual teenagers. They're just friends chatting about stuff. You know, they're getting ready for this party and Caleb's like surprise birthday party. And I just think it's a sweet scene and I think they should just should have just kept it just for fun. In episode 18, A Kiss Before Lying, we have a scene between Pam and Emily, which I adore and I wish that they had kept it. So Pam and Emily are walking in the town center and this is just after they've had dinner with Maya. And Pam talks about next time she visits, they're gonna to go to the shore. And Emily says that would be really nice and ask if she can bring Maya along. And Pam says yes, but she does express her concerns about Maya saying that if she makes Emily happy, then she's happy for her, but she does think that she's difficult. And Emily thinks this is because Maya brought up dating a guy and that that would maybe be confusing for Pam, but Pam says that isn't it. And Maya can date whoever she likes. The issue is that she thinks that she is manipulative and she was trying to push Pam's buttons all night at dinner. And Emily tries to convince her, basically tells her that she just needs to get to know Maya more and that she will really like her and she hopes that Pam will see how much Emily loves her and will also grow to love her as well. Oh, the real her yet. Okay, maybe. I mean, I remember when I met your dad's brothers for the first time, I couldn't stand them either. And I love them now. And I know you'll feel that way about Maya too. Once you see what I see in her. And then they share like cupcakes and it's just such a cute scene. It gives us more of Pam's character development and her kind of journey in, in this whole thing. And it also gives us a really sweet moment between the two of them, which we don't get super often. And yeah, I just think this scene's so sweet. I wish they'd kept it in. In episode 21, Breaking the Code, we have two quick scenes. The first one is... Ren and Spencer had obviously gone out drinking and then come back to his apartment and she falls asleep on the couch and he puts a blanket over her. It's a sweet scene, but I feel like it's not really necessary. Then we have Emily and Hannah in the kitchen and e Hannah runs in after finding out that Melissa worked at the law firm of like the letter they got from the A address and she runs in saying that Melissa is A to call the other girls basically to tell them. So these two scenes, not really essential. Um, I suppose the Ren scene is kind of sweet, but aside from that, I feel like these are fine to be left. In episode 24, If These Dolls Could Talk, we have three and they're actually pretty lengthy ones. The first one we have is with Garrett and Emily. Spencer drops Emily back at home and Garrett approaches her. He looks very like disheveled, you know how they do, like they do with Ezra. Anytime that Ezra has facial hair, you know that man is going through it. So. Garrett comes over and he asks if it's true that Emily is moving back in and she says that it is. Says, oh, he bets that Toby will be happy to have her back because they're old friends and it's all very weird and she's kind of, you can tell that she's uncomfortable and he says that Toby is always stapled to Jenna and he can never get Jenna alone and like, what is all that about? It's really weird and it kind of shows that Garrett is really struggling with having lost his relationship with Jenna. I think he just came back to help her. She just had surgery. Yeah, I know. I heard. So, like, what's going to happen when they take off her bandages? Toby's still going to be cutting her meat. Hey, Em. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. And then Spencer gets out the car and asks Emily, you know, is she okay? Does she need any help? And Emily says she's fine and goes into the house. And then Garrett waves at Spencer and he walks away. Aside from this scene that was deleted, we don't actually see Garrett in this episode until the very end when he is arrested. 
And I feel like this would have been good to include because it kind of leads him to be more suspicious and kind of makes you understand why they could think that he was the one that murdered Allison. And yeah, just contributed more to the idea of him being guilty because I just never really bought it that much. But I think this scene would have kind of helped with the context of that. And also how much, yeah, losing Jenna really got to him because she kind of starts going out with Noel. And then we also see in Pretty Dirty Secrets, which is the Pretty Little Lies webisodes, which I'm also going to do a video about, we see again more of him struggling with the fact that him and Jenna aren't together anymore. And then he dies in the next season. So I feel like that storyline with him and Jenna isn't really resolved that much. So I think scenes like this just kind of add a bit more context to his character. And then we have a scene with Jenna and Toby where Toby is like fixing Jenna's shelves or something. And she says that he doesn't have to stay with her all the time because this is when she just had her surgery, right? So that's when Toby's kind of looking after her. And also Spencer is just broken up with him. So she's kind of all he has. And she says, you know, you should go out with your friends. And he says he doesn't have any. And she asks about Spencer. And Toby says that Spencer means nothing to him anymore. What about Spencer? She's not a friend. She's not anything to me anymore. I don't know. I just don't really care for this one. I think any scenes with Toby and Jenna are weird because we know what she did to him. So him being nice to her and, and things, I know that it's kind of a definitely very complex and complicated relationship because they are step siblings. But scenes with them just made me a little bit uncomfy. So I'm fine. I'm fine to for this one to not be there. Then lastly, we are in the Marin kitchen and Emily and Hannah are talking about how weird it is that Jason is actually a Hastings, which I liked because we didn't really see any of the other girls' reactions to this news. Spencer's family lived next door to them for years. I mean, her dad knowing that oh, Jason- I know. I mean, I thought my family was screwed up. Spencer's dad makes mine look honest. Caleb comes in and Hannah's, you know, she's all a bit frantic. And so we get like a cute little scene between them and Hannah just being adorable. Here, have a carrot. This is a parsnip. And then we actually get an Emily and Caleb scene, which is nice. And she's confiding in him about Maya, saying that Maya now hates her for telling her parents that she's okay. And he says that Maya knows how much that Emily loves her and that she'll come back. And I thought it was really nice. We never really see Emily and Caleb interact. I think I've mentioned this before, but I really love scenes where we get like random pairings. And because of that, I thought this was a really cute scene. I feel like Caleb's really intertwined. He's, he's like one of the gals in the second season. So I really like this scene. Emily, it doesn't happen just because you change your zip code. You don't get a fresh start when you run away. You get it when you face what's making you run. She'll be back as soon as she's figured that out. So now we're moving on to season three and we're gonna start with the second episode, which is Blood is the New Black. And we have two scenes. The first is Arya in her bedroom when Byron comes in to tell her that dinner's ready and she asks Byron if he knew that Meredith was applying at Rosewood. And he says that he didn't even know that she was back in Rosewood, that she was applying to be a teacher or anything like that. And I guess it's meant to show Byron is maybe being a little bit suspicious, like, or untrustworthy, because it's not really clear in this episode if he's lying about knowing that she was back or not. But then they talk about Meredith being back later, so I feel like it's a little bit redundant. You don't really need both scenes, and I think the scene they kept is the better out of the two. I just watched Sorority Wars last night, which is one of my favourite movies. If you haven't seen it, add it to your list for, like, you know, a sleepover movie to watch or, or whatever. It's so good, and it's so funny to watch now because it stars Lucy Hale, and her kind of opponent in this movie is called Gwen, and she is played by Amanda, who also played Meredith. So, and this movie was actually before Pretty Little Lies. It came out in 2009, I think. Um, and it's so funny to see them like facing off in this movie as well. And yeah, if you haven't seen Sorority Wars, you should watch it because it's a banger. It's been one of my favorite movies for like a decade now. It's so good. We then have Emily going to Ezra's to see if Arya's there, and this happens after she bails on her test because she uh, 
um, remembers something about Jenna from that night. And she seems very hectic and she says that she, you know, didn't finish it and she doesn't know if they'll let her take it again. And she's just kind of like, I'd have to go. <laughs> um, and he seems quite concerned about this. Emily, wait, are they gonna let you take it again? I don't know. There's too many things going on right now. I just need to find Aria. And the scene is only quick. And we do also have in a later scene, Ezra mentions to Ella that he saw Emily and that she seemed quite frantic about the test and he wanted to see how she'd done. So I feel like we don't really need this scene because he mentions it later on. Stay hydrated, bitches. Hey, I feel like that meme of Selena Gomez. <laughs> I paused filming to have a lunch break and when I came back, it was freezing cold out here. So, um, yes. <laughs> Wrap up warm, kids. So the sixth episode of season three, we have the remains of A. And it's just a quick one between Spencer and Jason after they come out of the antique shop, I think it is, where they find Ali's anklet. And Spencer is basically explaining to him that he's going to have to go in to the police station alone because it will be bad for her. It will look bad on her if she goes in there, which makes complete sense. Um, but I feel like it made sense anyway, why she wouldn't want to go in. So yeah, I get where they cut this one because it's pretty self-explanatory. In episode eight, Stolen Kisses, we have a scene between Spencer and Caleb. And I'll talk more about this in my Spencer and Caleb deep dive. I actually put a poll up on my community tab. So make sure you keep an eye on there because I usually do polls on there and over on my Reddit. And you guys, at the moment, Ezria is in the lead of the couple that is going to get their first video made about them but i have a huge list and all of them will be coming at some point so i'm gonna do a spaler deep dive and i'll talk more about it then but i genuinely was not surprised by spaler at all i had always felt that there was a bit of weird like flirtiness and chemistry between them and this scene really like showcases it i think this might be the first time because i think the scenes where i noticed it more was in like season four or five and i might feel a little guilty but i'm not crazy no you're not crazy yeah neither are you thank you spencer and caleb are in her kitchen and he's talking about how it's weird for him to be around his mum and her family because people who have money don't ever talk about it whereas people who don't have money he feels like he talks about it a lot and if they have enough and if they you know how they're gonna make more and, and everything like that whereas with them because they have money they just never even talk about it and obviously Spencer is part of a family like that and she says that she kind of always choked a little bit on the silver spoon whereas Melissa was more accepting and happy to just kind of live that lifestyle and Caleb asks if when she's older if she's just going to give it all away and she says no she says she might feel guilty sometimes but she's not crazy and she also says that Caleb isn't crazy either and I don't know there's just like a little bit of weird low-key flirting in this scene and the chemistry is kind of like there. We then have a scene where Hannah sees Toby at the brew and she sees him walk by, she says hi to him and um, asks him where he's going and he is a bit standoffish with her, asking why the liars always get to ask questions but they never get to answer any. And she asks him not to be mad at Spencer because, you know, she's going through a lot and he says that he's sick of the secrets. Don't be angry at her, Toby. I'm not angry at her. I've just had it with her keeping me in the dark. I would have thought you'd be sick of the secrets by now. I actually, like I mentioned, really love scenes where we get different characters interacting. I can't even remember a scene where it's just Toby and Hannah. Like, this might be the only one and they cut it. Um, or yeah, would, like Emily and Caleb or Aria and Caleb, um, Toby and Aria. I like scenes like that where we get to see different people interacting. So I think this would have been a fun one um, to keep in just for that. In episode 9, the Khan game, we have a very quick scene where Noel just passes somebody a note, like this random guy, in 
the hallway. I don't know if it was supposed to symbolize that he was like inviting people to his party or something, but he just gives it to this one guy and the scene doesn't make any sense. So even if I added it back in, I wouldn't even know where to put it and it would not make any sense. Episode 10 is called What Lies Beneath and we have one scene for this. So Emily is at school and the swim coach is praising her on her times and Paige offers, you know, to let her train in her pool whenever she wants and they have kind of like a flirty moment. We can work out at my pool anytime you want. Something tells me you won't get a lot of swimming done there. <laughs> You're probably right. Honestly, I think they should have kept this scene in because it's actually a nice Paige and Emily scene. And I don't really care for Paige and Emily scenes. Um, I don't care for them as a couple, really. And I didn't really enjoy most of their relationship. But this is actually a scene where they seemed genuine. Like, they seemed sweet. And it didn't feel awkward or forced like a lot of their scenes do. And it showed Paige's more supportive side. I actually liked this scene, which I wasn't expecting to. And then we have episode 11, Single Fright Female. And... In this, we have another Emily and Paige scene. And I was like, oh God, here we go again. But then I enjoyed this one as well. So I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> something, something is afoot here. And um, so Emily gets a text from Hannah saying that she wants her to come tonight for like a f something, oh, I can't remember what it's for. But basically Spencer's also going to be there. And that's why Emily doesn't want to go because they're not really on talking terms at the minute. Um, also her throwing her phone across the room literally made me laugh out loud when I saw it. I was like, what? what? Um, and then Paige comes back and she's, you know, got takeout for her. And Emily tells her that Hannah's holding her to go to the event, but she doesn't want to see Spencer. And Paige says that they should go, like they'll go together. And she wants the liars to like her and not be afraid of them, even though Emily said that she doesn't really care about that. But she said she feels like the girls think Paige is trying to pull Emily away from them and she doesn't want them to think that, so she wants to put in the effort with them. I don't care about their opinions. I do. I think you do too. Emily, your friends have to get to know me better. Again? I actually thought was really sweet. It was a really sweet scene and Paige came off as really likeable in this scene. And I liked that she wanted to put in an effort with the liars because we didn't really ever see that from her. For The Lady Killer, which is episode 12, we only have one short one and it's between Lyndon and Hannah. Um, and they don't really interact much, but he's sitting at the brew and she goes over. He's reading the newspaper, which has a picture of Maya in it. She asks him, you know, about Emily and how he's feeling about Maya and stuff. And he says that he was considering asking Emily if he would want to go away with him for the weekend. And Hannah is kind of supportive of that. And it's like, you know, you, you might as well ask her. I think that it would be a good idea. How do you think her girlfriend will feel about it? Trust me, I think Paige is busy this weekend. You really think she'd go? You won't know until you ask. I think this scene, it, like when you just look at it on the surface, it seems like, oh yeah, this isn't really relevant, like cut it out, whatever. But I actually think they should have kept it in because it's so much more eerie. Like when you have seen it and you know what's going to happen, Lyndon's talking to Hannah about this trip, knowing full well what he's planning to do on it. And the fact that he ends up shooting Caleb, like days later or however long this is before that trip and that Hannah's the one that encourages him to do this trip is like just add such a creepy layer to it that I'm like I feel like they should have kept it. In the 14th episode she's better now there's a really quick deleted scene and it's with Emily and she's closing up for the night at the brew and she thinks that she hears somebody outside and I like flicked through this episode to try and see where this would fit in and it just doesn't really fit in anywhere. So I'm like, where was this supposed to go? And yeah, there's not really like, I don't think Emily says to anyone or I think someone was watching me or anything like that. So I guess it was just for like the creepy factor, but it doesn't really have much payoff. In the 15th episode, Mona Mania, we have another Spencer and Jason deleted scene. And Spencer confronts him about being Mona's new advisor, like her new guidance counselor or whatever it is that he does at the school. And basically she isn't happy about it. And 
Jason says that Monet is trying to make amends and she's trying to be better. But Spencer says, you know, you could have said no because she doesn't say this. But I think the reason she says it is because, like, basically, you're my brother. Like, you could have, you know what she's done to me sort of thing. You could have said no. I'm in no place to rock the boat. Look, if anyone found out I was driving drunk, that I left the scene of an accident. Don't you get it, Jason? That person is Mona. And then they have a conversation about him drink driving. And he asks if Spencer has told anybody. And she said that she hasn't. Um, and he says to, like, obviously keep that between them two. And I feel like this one should have been included because she doesn't... When you take this out, she doesn't actually confront him about the fact that he is Mona's advisor. And I think... They had a sort of, not closeness, but a relationship um, because they found out that they were siblings across um, like the end of season two and season three. We had quite a few scenes of them together. So I think her confronting him about this would have made sense. And yeah, I feel like it should have been included. In episode 18, Dead to Me, we have Hannah and Emily at the brew. And this is when Hannah has just been to the bar, the lesbian bar, and she saw Shana, I think it was, and Paige having a drink there. And she tells Emily what she saw and what she, you know what is she going to do about it. And Emily says that she will speak to Paige about it. And she was with somebody. What kind of somebody? A girl type somebody. And I like this scene because without it, I don't think we ever see Hannah and Emily talking about what she saw. So I feel like when you watch it without this scene, it makes it look like Hannah never said anything. Or if she did, like, it was just kind of passed through. And I like, and Paige isn't, Paige isn't even in this episode at all. So we don't get like a con confrontation scene. The next time we see Paige that I could find when I was like skipping through. So I might have missed it is when they go to the costume shop and they meet Shauna like properly and then Emily kind of suspects that something's going on but she doesn't mention that she already had her suspicions because of what Hannah had said so I feel like this adds like a good level of context that is kind of missing and the last one for season three is in episode 21 out of sight out of mind and this is Hannah at the police station and this scene is so bizarre and I would like again skip through the episode to see where it would fit in but it just doesn't really make sense anywhere. Hannah goes into the police station because Pam is working in there. And I don't know if she was trying to get intel or get information or see if Wilden was there or because she just starts talking to Pam and being really awkward and being like, oh, I came to see Emily. But then Pam's like, well, she's not here. And then she just starts asking her weird questions. And it's just a really awkward and confusing scene. And I don't really understand the point of it. Well, I guess I'll just let you get back to whatever it is you were doing here. Okay, so now we're moving into season four, and we skip all the way to episode 10, and this is The Mirror Has Three Faces. And this one I thought was such a good scene when I watched it. I was like, why didn't they keep this? Um, I guess it's because it involves Ezra and Maggie, so it's not really part of anything to do with the core four so much. Um, but I still think it's important to include because the Malcolm storyline to me always felt very rushed, very weird and just kind of swept under the rug. But with this scene, we actually have them meeting at the brew. Ezra tells Maggie that even though he isn't Malcolm's biological dad, he would still like to be a part of his life. Um, but she says they need to have a fresh start on their own and, and basically says, no, he's not allowed to. I thought it changed things and it didn't. I still want to be a part of this life. The connection between us, it's real, even if it isn't biological. The universe didn't make this happen, Ezra. I did. And I feel like they definitely should have kept this in, because like I said, once we find out that Malcolm isn't actually Ezra's, it just kind of, like, goes away, um, sort of. And we see him and Arya talk about it a little bit, but I think having this final scene with Maggie would have felt like quite a bit of closure from this. Yeah, to kind of hear her reasoning a bit more as to why she just like took him and left. In episode 12, Now You See Me, Now You Don't, we have a sweet scene between Jake and Arya. 
and Jake brings Takeout back to Arya's house and he says that even though it was his choice of what movie to watch, he picked Shadow on the Stairs because it's like a really old horror film and he knows that she likes old movies and he likes scary movies, so it's kind of a bit of common ground for them. He said the movie was my choice, but I pick this for you. Hmm. Shadows on the Stairs. Sounds pretty scary. It's old. And you like old movies, right? Uh, I like scary. We're meeting in the middle. It's a great choice. <laughs> and she says that she's making enhanced mac and cheese and it's a family recipe. And he says, oh, I feel honored unless this is something you make for everybody. And obviously we know from back in season one that this is the first thing that she ever made Ezra was enhanced mac and cheese. So then she decides against it and she makes a stir fry instead. And I thought this was a really cute scene. Um... And I think it adds more context to later in the episode because here we have Jake showing up and he brought the old movie to kind of bridge that um, interest with Arya and kind of, you know, show that he was making an effort, which is one of the reasons why I actually said that I didn't really think they fit that well was because they had such different interests and it didn't really seem like he was putting in the effort. But then in this scene, we see he is putting in the effort. So I wish they would have kept it in because it is um, sweet and they had really good chemistry in this scene. So I think it's a shame we didn't actually end up seeing more of them. And also later on in this episode, um, Jake falls asleep while they're watching the movie and Arya kind of is thinking about Ezra and how he liked old movies. And I think having this scene before adds more context because it make, doesn't make Jake look as bad for falling asleep during the movie because at least he tried. But also it makes more sense as to why Arya is thinking about Ezra because they talked about the unconventional mac and cheese or whatever it's called, enhanced mac and cheese. Okay, episode 16 is called Close Encounters and we have three uh, short scenes for this one. So in Hannah's bedroom, we have Hannah thinks about calling Caleb. She looks... Um, at him in her contact list, but then she decides to call Travis instead. Um, I feel like this wasn't really needed because as soon as Caleb came back to Rosewood, I knew that it was, <laughs> it was only a matter of time before Travis got the boot. Um, so they didn't even need to hint at it in this scene because it was just obvious. We then have Emily waiting at the bus stop for Shana, and then Shana pulls up and says that she's waiting, meaning Ali, because Emily was going to meet Ali, and they drive away. Um, we literally see them in the car straight after this, so it's not needed. But there is a scene after this at the end that was cut of Emily. She's sitting in her room and she's looking at an old picture of her and Ali and she's crying because this is after Spencer kind of ruined that moment for her. And even though it's a really short scene, I do wish that they had kept it in because it further shows like the love that Emily still has for Alison and why she was the only one that Alison truly trusted. Episode 18 is called Hot for Teacher, um, and we just have a really quick scene. It's just Emily cleaning up at the brew, and she's about to leave, and she's, like, hidden something, like, money or something, into a coffee bag for some scheme that they're doing, and then as she tries to leave with it, the barista is like, oh, you have to pay for that, and then she pays for it, and she leaves. You're gonna pay for that coffee, right? Yeah. The whole scene is just weird and awkward. Uh, like, no offense to the guy in this scene, but his acting is really, like, awkward and this scene just feels so weird. So I wonder if they just cut it because it just wasn't good rather than it was cut for time. Episode 20 is called Free Fall. And we have a quick scene between Toby and Veronica where she calls him because she's concerned about Spencer. Where's Spencer? Not in a good place. That's why you're here. I feel like the scene how it is isn't really necessary because it's so short. And he also mentions later that Veronica had called him. That's why he's there. But I think if they had fleshed out this scene a bit more, it would have been a really good one to include. And it would have been really nice to see Toby and Veronica interact and Veronica confide in him and know that she can trust him when it comes to Spencer, especially because in the early seasons, she was very disapproving of him. Moving on to season five, we have a really short scene from Escape to New York, the first episode where Ali sees A walking towards her and she runs away from him. To be honest with you, 
she doesn't seem very alarmed. <laughs> I mean, A was, A was coming at her with pace and she did not seem that startled by it at all. Surfing the Aftershocks, which is the third episode, it just has a quick clip of the police pulling up to Rosewood High. Episode four, Thrown from the Ride, has a scene with Arya. Um, she's just walking through the town centre back to her car and she sees a note on the window that says watch your back but when she opens it it actually says watch your back if you park against my bumper again so it's kind of showing that she's still paranoid about A but honestly it just felt a bit weird and cringy so I feel like I'm glad they didn't include it. Then at the brew we have a scene which I really wish they had kept in so Paige goes and asks Lucas um, if it's worth putting Hannah and Emily in danger um, because they're part of this kind of like anti Allison team, you know, the team that Mona kind of constructed. Luca says that if they're with Allison, then they're already in danger. I love Emily and you love Hannah. That's all that matters. We have got to stop this. We can't stop it. Paige thinks that they should try and stop the plan, and Luca says that they can't and it's too late, even if they wanted to. And I feel like more seems more I feel like more scenes of the like anti alley team would have been really good because they kind of just disappear like Mona forms them and they're all these kind of like you know notable characters that have had issues with Allison and that would have an issue with her coming back but then that whole thing just kind of fizzles out a little bit so for Miss Me Times 100 which is obviously the 100th episode and it's also the fifth episode of season five we have four deleted scenes the first one is Ashley and Hannah and Ashley said that she was a bit nervous at first of Hannah dating Travis so soon after Caleb, but she really likes him and Hannah says that she likes him too. I know I was nervous about you seeing Travis so soon after Caleb, but I like him. I like him too. Even though this scene is short, I think it's a really nice scene to include, especially because without it, it always kind of looked like Ashley never thought that anyone other than Caleb was good enough for Hannah. Then we have another Paige and Emily scene, and I think this is supposed to come directly after Paige and Allison talk in Emily's bedroom. And Emily says that she arranged that more for Paige and her kind of closure than it was for Allison's. And then she also invites her to this sing along later. And again, I really liked this scene and I was very much confused by it because I was like, I'm not a Paige and Emily fan. Why are these deleted scenes making me a fan? I've gone full jumper, I was too cold. Then we have a scene at the brew, which again is the anti Allison crew. And Lucas says that they managed to get everybody away from Allison. I guess that means like the liars and stuff. Um, Jenna says that they did their part, so Mona now needs to do hers. And Mona says that she has and more. We got everyone away from her, just like you asked. We did our part, but did you do yours? I got what we needed and more. And this comes after she filmed that clip of Allison slapping her. And I feel like this is what we needed. We needed more anti alley like team scenes and things and especially like Jenna and Mona interacting I feel like that's just like peak Prilla Liars villain material right there the fact that we never really get scenes with them it's what we deserved finally for this episode we have Toby taking Caleb to his like granddad's cabin or something and letting him stay there when he returns from Ravenswood and he seems concerned about what happened there because Caleb is obviously very shaken up by it and Caleb says that he thought he could return and everything would be the same but it isn't because he isn't the same as when he left. Stay as long as you want. Thank you. For everything. And I actually really like this scene a lot because Toby and Caleb are a very sweet dynamic and they allude to the them being friends quite a bit throughout the show and I just wish they'd maybe develop that friendship a bit more because obviously the show is predominantly about female friendship so we don't really get a lot of bromances um, in this show and I think that Toby and Caleb was a really sweet one and him looking out for him when he came back was really nice and just further adds to the sweetness of Toby's character. So I think they should have kept in. Episode seven is called The Silence of E. Lamb and we just have one scene and it's Allison in an alleyway and she's talking to Noel on the phone 
and she says that she wasn't trying to um, get rid of him, that she wouldn't get rid of him, and there's something that she needs his help with that she can't ask the girls to do for her. You know, it has to be you. I can't ask them to do something like this. They've already done enough, Noel. And honestly, I feel like if they'd kept this scene in, I mean, Noel's connection to this whole thing doesn't really make any sense, but at least it would have made a little bit more sense if we got a couple of scenes of them interacting like this, because they just don't really. His involvement kind of feels like it comes out of nowhere, so at least with little scenes like this, it kind of connects him to Alison a bit more. In Scream For Me, which is episode eight, we have two scenes that kind of relate to one another. So the first one is after Hannah has her kind of encounter with, um, oh my god, what was his name? Arya's mum's fiancé, the, like, baker or whatever he was? I don't remember his name. I can't remember his name. But anyway, him, after she has her kind of dodgy encounter with him, she actually comes back out to the car and Caleb is waiting for her and he says, oh, it said closed and she says, oh yeah, well, Arya's mum's fiancé, he made me a sandwich anyway and Caleb says oh that's you know really nice of him um but when they get into the car we can see that Hannah is obviously upset by what had happened who's he Aria's mom's fiance that was nice of him yeah nice I think this was worth including because it further then adds to why obviously Caleb was angry. He was going to be angry anyway, but then to also know that he was like right there when it had happened. And it also shows that Hannah was so like upset by what had happened and unsure about the whole situation that she didn't even feel like she could tell like, Caleb about it. And she goes straight to Arya to tell her after this. So she doesn't even tell Caleb, she goes straight to Arya um and I really hate that scene because obviously Arya is really horrible to her about it we then have another deleted scene after this where Arya is writing up the name cards for the wedding and she's like putting them into a bag and she actually rips up Hannah's one and I feel like I'm glad they didn't include this because Arya not believing her was already horrible enough without adding this scene onto it as well. Then we have How the A Stole Christmas, which is the 13th episode in our kind of Christmas special, the only one we ever get, which was such a shame. The first one is literally just Paige and Emily kind of like running around in the winter ball thing, like looking for somebody. Um, so not really necessary. And then the second one is a really quick one. It's like, again, the gang trying to find somebody. But they also <laughs> have this clip of Ezra where he's talking to the twins that are dressed as Cece and Allison. And I don't know, I just thought that was really funny. And I feel like they should have just kept it just, just for the banter. Is there a coincidence there or anything? Episode 15 is called Fresh Meat and we have two for this. The first one is Ashley sitting in the kitchen and she rings Hannah and it goes to voicemail and she asks her how her trip is going, um, you know, to let her know if she's doing okay and that she really misses her. Here, check your emails. I sent you that article. I miss you. I know this scene isn't really like relevant to anything or super necessary, but I do wish they'd kept it because... Hannah and Ashley have such a sweet relationship in the show and I just love any kind of sweet heartfelt moments like this. The next one is outside of the brew and Spencer is on the phone to Toby, we assume, and she's saying, please call me, I really need to talk to you. And then Johnny comes over and she's obviously upset and they're talking and she basically says, you know, you don't want to stay in my guest house like it's a crime scene and I was arrested last year. My house is not only a crime scene, but this Thanksgiving I was arrested for murder. I know. Your mom told my mom. And he says that people have a lot of darkness, or like everyone has darkness and he's drawn to people who have more than others or something like that, basically saying he's not afraid of Spencer. To be honest, I didn't care for Johnny and Spencer. I did not care for their relationship. So I also don't really care for this deleted scene. Episode 19 is Out Damn Spot. And this scene happens just before the scene with Hannah and Tom where she asks about college and he says that he's already paying for Kate to go. It's great to see you, Hannah. Um, I brought you something from the grill. Ham and cheese on a croissant. 
since you don't have time for lunch. I think this scene, this deleted part of the scene, just makes this scene just even more sad than it already was because Hannah comes in and he, you know, says it's good to see her, which obviously shows that he never sees her. And she brings him lunch as well because he said that he didn't really have a lot of time. And it just, yeah, it just makes it even more sad because I feel like she always tried her best and just wanted to be cared for by him. And he just never really like put her first and even after everything that he put her through she still showed him kindness episode 20 we have pretty isn't the point in this one we have aria in mike's room and she's looking at the morse code necklace that was in his gym bag then she thinks that she hears mike coming up the stairs and it's all very suspenseful but then it turns out to just be andrew who had let himself in the front door this scene i get why it was cut and i don't think it needs to be added back in because it was quite redundant i mean the liars literally find this necklace in the scene right before this or like just a little bit before this so you don't really need to see the necklace again and then after this we see andrew and aria together anyway so it doesn't really add anything then at hannah's house she's having a lesson with her pageant coach when caleb comes to the door and she basically has to kind of like shoo him away because she's trying um to make the most of this like lesson fine just go why are you shoving me because she's in the other room asking me questions i don't know how to answer I, I gotta go it's a really quick scene um but it's really cute and i like these little comedic scenes especially between hannah and caleb because i just loved their dynamic in the earlier seasons then the third one is just aria like walking through the woods i think this is before she catches mike like doing whatever he's doing episode 22 is to plea or not to plea and we have two for this one the first one is emily's house and talia is staying there she comes in to ask emily where her towels are and she sees a picture of pam and wayne saying that they look like a really nice couple and then she goes into this whole thing about how that's what she wanted she wanted the marriage and the kids and the house but that's just not really how it worked out she asks emily if she wants those things and emily says she's not sure but it won't look obviously exactly like that because she's gay the house the marriage the kid i mean don't you want all those things maybe it just won't be exactly like that i just thought that was a really sweet moment we don't really ever see emily or to be honest really any of the girls like talk about the future and things like that so i thought that was kind of a nice moment to include um and then talia tells emily like how beautiful her wedding was and stuff and i i feel like I was, that's what made me a bit conflicted on this scene like whether it should have been included or not because on one side nice to see emily talk about the future and things but then also talia talking about her wedding was a bit weird and like her dreams of what she thought her marriage was going to be and I think it just really amplifies the fact that Emily was still a high school student at this time and Talia was like a woman. She had her own life. So I think it just, this scene makes their relationship even weirder. Then, then we have an A scene, like a full on A scene. And I just feel like no A scene should be deleted because we, you know, get so few of them throughout the show. Like we just get such short ones. And this one was actually a really good one. It's A playing with their dollhouse. And they already have Hannah and Allison in orange jumpsuits and they put them at the top and close the jail door. And then they hold up an orange jumpsuit next to the Spencer doll to kind of allude to her being next. And I think that was such a good scene. I feel like they should have kept it. Lastly, for season five, we have Welcome to the Dollhouse, which is episode 25. We have one scene which is just really quick, which is Toby coming down to get Ezra, and then they walk past Andrew, who's, you know, got his laptop and he's doing his, like, weird listening to conversations thing. And I don't even know, did we even find out why he was doing that? I can't even remember. Anyway, that's not the scene I want to talk about. The scene I want to talk about is actually a pretty lengthy scene, and it is a dream sequence. It's Allison and Mrs. De Laurentiis sitting together in the garden and they're looking through photo albums. Um, but all the pictures are of Ali and she's kind of like, oh, there's, you know, not really that many pictures of Jason. And Mrs. D justifies it by saying, oh, Jason was camera shy. And yeah, of course, Jason was there and, and all this kind of stuff. And there's like pictures missing. And then Mrs. D turns the page and she sees all of the lies mug shots. And she says that she's glad she wasn't alive to see this. I'm glad I didn't live to see this.
this is when Ali wakes up and we realise this was a dream. And then Ali looks at the picture she has of her mum on the wall and also the picture that she has of her and all the girls. And I thought it was actually a really nice scene. We don't really get to see any of Alison and Mrs. D aside from really like harsh ones, harsh flashbacks. So this was a sweet scene. And also it always is so sad that they never actually got to see each other after Alison came back to Rosewood. You know, by that time, Mrs. D was already dead. And I feel like it showed a more emotional side of her and we got to see them together even if it was just a dream sequence so I thought that was nice. Okay for season six we're gonna go to episode two which is Songs of Innocence. We have Emily in her car and she's talking to Pam on the phone and she says that she's gonna go and hang out with Hannah but actually this is a lie and she, we know she goes to the shooting range and before they hang up they like say I love you and everything and I think this actually would have been nice to include even though it's very brief and like not technically that relevant to the story. Em, love you. I love you too. I just think it adds like another layer to Emily going to the shooting range and not feeling like she can talk to her mum about it and I always really liked Pam and Emily's relationship so I think having that kind of backstory as well rather than just seeing Emily straight at the shooting range make adds more context to the scene and then at the Hastings house it's nighttime and Veronica goes past Spencer's door and sees that she's left a boot um, in the door to keep it open and she looks in to see if she's asleep and she thinks that she is but Spencer's actually awake and then she leaves and again it's only a small scene but I think it really shows Veronica trying to understand what Spencer went through and kind of the fallout of that the fact that she feels like she has to keep that boot there because obviously the doors would slam shut and she would be trapped in there and that she looks at it and I think she thinks about moving it but then keeps it there and I just liked that moment because even that small bit showed a level of understanding and that she was trying to sympathize with what had happened to Spencer while also trying to understand it. Then at the brew we see Alison and Lorenzo having coffee and she said that in jail you know she was afraid all the time and sometimes she would go and hide in the chapel but then she started going more regularly and praying but she felt stupid because she feels like it's stupid to believe that there could be a reason for any of this stuff and she says that it feels weird you know kind of talking to him about this stuff and he offers to change the subject but she says uh, know that it's like nice to talk about it. Let's talk about something else. No. Let's talk about this a little bit more. Okay. I feel like I didn't really care for this pairing of her and Lorenzo, but it is a nice scene and he is sweet and it is kind of nice to see Alison, you know, kind of be actually seen by somebody and not just judged instantly or you know this is kind of when the girls were drifting away from her so it was kind of nice that she at least had one person that she could talk to. In No Stone Unturned which is the sixth episode there's a very quick scene where Leslie or maybe like a body double for her because we don't actually see her face but she's like going through her car and her car's all messy and I think she realizes that something is missing um, or has been messed with and then she angrily crushes a pair of her fake glasses like she stomps on them and honestly the whole Leslie Stone storyline just never ever made sense to me and this adds even less context like <laughs> this I think makes it even more confusing so yeah let's not even bring this back in. Episode 9 is the last dance and we see Clark taking photos of Sarah while she's having kind of a heated conversation on the phone and Emily gets really snappy with Aria about it and angry and honestly, the last thing that we need is more scenes of Emily being weird and like aggressively protective over Sarah. So this one, this one can stay in the vault. Then episode 10 is game over Charles and we have a very quick Cece flashback, but I think they should have included it. So it's a flashback of Cece and you can tell by the top that she's wearing that this is from the day that they questioned her uh, while Alison was in New York, right? They were questioning her about, I think, Wilden's death and about knowing if Alison was alive and everything like that. So she's wearing that same shirt and she's in the back of the police car with Barry and he says hit like hit me really hard and then take the car and 
then we flash back to Cece and Alison in Radley when she's telling the story and she says, you know, that Mrs. De Laurentiis must have made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Hit me hard, then take the car. I guess mom made him an offer he couldn't refuse. I like this because it actually explains how Cece escaped police custody the night that the girls found Ali in New York. So I think they definitely should have kept it because it made sense for that whole scenario. But then also it shows that even Barry, who always seemed like the sweetest one, was also able to be corrupted. So that's a shame. Episode 12 is Charlotte's Web. And we just have a very quick scene after they had dinner at Allison's where Jordan offers his condolences and says that he wished he could have met Charlotte, like he'd heard a lot about her. And Allison tells him that what he's heard about her is from Hannah, which means that it's not true because Hannah didn't really know Charlotte like she did. What you heard was from Hannah, it's not true. She didn't know her, not who Charlotte really was. Oh, uh, where's Emily? She left, she said she had to meet her mom. You mean she escaped? It's just all very awkward. And then Hannah and Caleb, um, and then Spencer and Caleb decide they're going to go home and so do Jordan and Hannah and it's all just a bit like awkward and weird. Um, but I feel like it still could have been good to keep because it shows more of Alison's grieving process and also the resentment that she's holding towards the girls for how they treated Charlotte. Episode 13 is the gloves are on and this one is such a good scene. So we see A's storage unit um, it's got the dollhouse in it, it's got the masks of, I think, Emily and Allison, it's got the creepy baby costume from The First Secret, it's got the mannequin with the yellow dress on it from Game Over Charles, and I feel like I wish they'd kept it because, firstly, I love scenes like this where I can be a nosy bitch, and I can, like, pause and look around at everything, but also, you know, and we get callbacks to earlier seasons, which I love, um, but also I feel like the fact that AD had all of this stuff that was obviously Charlotte's, then, I mean, the Alex Drake storyline will never make sense to me, but at least this makes a little bit more sense that she had everything. She had everything that Mona had had because Cece had it and then everything that Cece had, she had, um, which explains how she kind of knew all about the games and everything. I don't know, it just adds a little bit, a little bit more context there to a storyline, which is just utterly incomprehensible. <laughs> Episode 17 is We've All Got Baggage and it's just a quick scene with Emily in office and she's on the phone to Spencer saying that Damien didn't really tell her anything but she isn't willing to give up and she's about to leave a note on his desk um, but then she ends up taking his notebook instead and it doesn't really add anything. We kind of didn't really need to see this happen because they just, I think, talk about it in a later scene. So, And finally, season seven. And I feel like... It's such a shame because the quality, not only did the quality of PLL itself decline, but also the quality of deleted scenes. Like from seasons one to four or one to five, we were getting like quality deleted scenes, like proper like fleshed out ones, ones that I'm like, we should keep this. But it's like six and seven, they hardly have any deleted scenes and the ones they do have are just really short, so yeah. Episode one, TikTok bitches, we have Spencer when she fell asleep with that Radley file. And then she wakes up and she calls Caleb. Doesn't really add anything. The Darkest Night, which is the 10th episode of season seven. This actually is quite a nice scene. Um, it's after Marco brings Spencer the food and they sit in the kitchen and eat together. And they're kind of just having some like, you know, playful, flirty banter. Um, and it actually was quite sweet and I liked their chemistry. So I do wish we'd have seen more of them. And I think this would have been a nice scene just to include to show their bond a little bit more. Episode 11 is playtime and we have a scene between Spencer and Veronica where Veronica is telling her about when she found out that Mary was pregnant and, and Jessica told her that she had a twin. We see a picture of what Mary and Jessica looked like as like tweens, like teens sort of age. Um, and honestly, I feel like they should have kept this in because justice for my girl Veronica, she was telling her story and you and you cut her short. That was shady. Jessica told me Mary was pregnant. And I got this, this terrible cold feeling in my stomach. That woman is a bloody saint for dealing with Peter Hastings. Then we have a really sweet scene with Arya and Holden, which I really loved. Um, I really love this friendship. I think it's so underrated. And Arya's confiding in him about how Ezra has now been reunited with Nicole and she doesn't really know what that means for their engagement. I don't know how this ends. I don't have any control. Somebody else is writing the ending. 
And planning a wedding gives you something that feels like control. He ends up giving her an IOU for a wedding cake. And I think they should have just kept this scene because it's so cute. I think it's one of my favorites out of all the ones that we've looked at today. And I just love their friendship so much. They just had such a sweet nature to it. Episode 13 is Hold Your Peace. And in this one, we see Emily and Toby at the hospital. And she's trying to kind of console him with everything that happened with Yvonne. And this is when we see him kind of come up with the idea to get married to her. If this is like what she's what the doctors are considering a good day for her because it's still a bit touch and go and I thought this was sweet I feel like they should have included it because I always love Emily and Toby friendship scenes and um yeah it was just it was just a sweet moment because that moment is so harrowing when he actually marries um Yvonne so I think just seeing the kind of conception of it in his mind is also really romantic if today is supposed to be a good day I want to make sure it's the best day Yvonne's ever had. Episode 17 is called Driving Miss Crazy and this is a scene between Hannah and Ashley and this is another one that I really wish they'd kept in. So it's Hannah and Ashley. Firstly, Ashley's like looking through her designs and stuff, which is sweet. But then the main part of the scene is her asking Hannah if she's sure that she wants to elope and it just feels a bit rushed and, you know, she isn't really sure about this whole thing. And so Hannah reassures her that it is definitely what she wants to do. And the way that she talks about Caleb in this scene is just so sweet. I honestly think it is one of the best quotes in the entire show and they cut it. Like the way that she talks about him is so beautiful. It's so romantic. And I can't believe that they didn't keep it in. Honey, mom, I haven't made the best choices. I've made some pretty bad ones, but Caleb is not one of them. He is the one thing in this world that I'm sure of. Even just aside from that, I think Hannah's whole wedding just felt very rushed to me. And even just having this small scene where Ashley, you know, asks her if she's sure about it, just then almost in a way reassures the audience that that is what she wants to do, if that makes sense. Episode 18 is called Choose or Lose. And this is our final deleted scene. It's a very quick one and it's between Emily and Alison. And, you know, the countdown, they've got like 14 hours left on the board game or something. And Emily suggests leaving town. But yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> it doesn't really add anything. Um, so I feel like we didn't really need this one. So that is it. Those are all the Pretty Little Liars deleted scenes and my opinions on them. Honestly, watching these scenes like made me feel weirdly emotional. <laughs> I don't know why. Because yeah, I had seen some of them before um, because I'd watched the earlier DVDs, but after that, it was all on Netflix, so I still bought the DVD so that I could have them in my collection, but I didn't really, like, watch them or watch the bonus features. Um, so in, like, a weird way, it was, like, seeing new Pretty Little Liars content, like, even though it's so old, like, after it not being on the air for six years, to be able to watch, like, to me anyway, like, brand new Pretty Little Liar scenes, I don't know, it was weird, it was just really nice and I really liked it. Um, even though they were only short scenes. Overall, I think the ones I wish they'd kept the most from season one is Ari and Ella um, talking about her date with David. Um, season two, I loved Toby and Spencer like by the fire talking about his like carpentry business. Um, also the whole thing with Melissa's engagement ring. They should have kept that. Otherwise it's a plot hole. Pam and Emily, when they share their cupcakes is also a really sweet one. In season five, Alison's dream about Mrs. De Laurentiis. And then in season seven, I wish they'd kept the Arya and Holden scene just because it's sweet. And also the scene with Ashley and Hannah talking about eloping. So that is all of the Pretty Little Lies deleted scenes. If you stuck around till the end, then I'm also gonna be doing this video with Gossip Girl. But let me know down in the comments, which scenes did you really like? Do you wish they'd kept? And yeah, make sure you like and comment and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.